Hi there, this is the Dark Queen. I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe to my channel, Creepy Signal, bringing you all your nightmare material. And tonight, story time with the Dark Queen, I have something very, very special for you involving brujeria and Mexican magic. That's right, I'm covering chapter one of Noche de los Killer Puppets. Right, Night of the Killer Puppets. So yes, I'm going to be covering the first chapter of my very own book. I hope you enjoy. It had been two weeks, three days, and eight hours since they had found Ramona's body. She had been stabbed to death 17 times in her own backyard. Lupin could still smell the tamales she had brought over to her from home for lunch the day before they had found her. Even though the two were neighbors and had come from complete opposite worlds of theology, over the years the two older ladies had managed to become extremely close. Ramona, a devout Catholic, and Lupin, a practicing witch, hadn't let their picket fences or spiritual differences get in the way of their friendship. Ramona was far too nice of a person to let things like gossip rule her decisions and judgment, and now all Lupin could wonder was how someone could kill such a sweet person like Ramona. Come over for dinner. She could still hear Ramona's kind voice when she had first met her at the grocery store. That was when times were bad for Lupin, and she could just barely afford bread and dog food. And Ramona knew that Lupin didn't have a dog, and Lupin knew that Ramona could have easily started neighborhood gossip about it, but she never said a word. It was from that kind encounter that Lupin knew that every hi and hello and how have you been were sincere and she was really a genuinely kind person. With Lupin having no extended family and Ramona a widower with only one surviving granddaughter who lived out of the city, they could relate just how profoundly alone each woman felt. And so over time, their friendship blossomed from coffee to chatty dinners, all the way to bingo buddies. Lupin smiled at the memories of her dear friend, but lost her smile as she realized that now all of that was gone. Lupin felt her joy slip away and be replaced with a searing hatred for whom had ever done this. The abrupt sound of a late breaking news interruption on her TV prompted her to look at the old dusty screen. A frail looking reporter somberly stated that a 25 year old woman had also been murdered down the street. As the chilling words sunk in, Lupin's hatred and anger subsided and was replaced with fear. She, unlike other elderly women, frequently used her brujeria reputation to her advantage and could hold her own against most of the street kids. But murderers and serial killers were an entirely different story. Lupin knew that she was going to have to do two things, protect herself and avenge Ramona. She could barely afford electricity much less a security system. So her dark eyes glistened in the dim light as she pondered how to make one herself. What do people fear in this city? She thought to herself. For an hour, she sat in her dimly lit room as anxiety crept over her. And an oncoming thunderstorm gradually replaced that peaceful night with its approach. Lightning crackled and thunder roared. Lupin began to shiver, both with the draft that was seeping through 
one of her broken windows and with the fear of the upcoming night. With a violent crackle, lightning struck a window pane shattering the glass. A sudden gust of wind bellowed. The old lady shuddered in her old knitted shawl and looked around at the papers that had fallen to the floor from the tall shelves. In her old age, she never again could reach them on her own. She bent down to begin gathering her old scrawlings as she stood up. Her eyes widened as it came to her. She held in her hand both keys. This would be both her earthly protection and her ultimate weapon. She grimaced as she creakily stood up and slowly began to smile as she tremblingly held the drawing out before her. An ancient picture of a nightmare, no, a donkey woman, was in her withered hands. Lupin knew that most people in San Antonio both knew and feared the legends. With the creaky cackle, she crumpled the dusty paper in her hand and swore to Ramona that the people's nightmares would be her avengers. And from that night, and for many nights, the vengeful witch began her venture to gather her collection. By mid-October, it was a time of year when thrill-seekers and ghost-hunters ventured out to Milian Park, Donkey Lady Bridge, and El Cameroncito in hopes of encountering any kind of paranormal activity in those legendary places. The wind howled furiously at Milian Park as Lupin sat waiting in a cold bench for the witching hour to arrive. The old woman knew of someone who had managed luckily to flee from the dancing devils of Milian Park. She knew that the skull-faced reaper-like beings were as ancient as time itself, and according to those who had managed to survive, the devils were able to read minds and foresee things to come. If an individual had malevolent desires in their head while in the park, the devils would come for them. The first bell somberly tolled midnight, and Lupin calmly waited for it to finish before starting her summoning spell. The spell was quick, and to one as adept as herself, and just as the second bell tolled, three large reaper-like beings silently arose from the ground. Lupin signed with one hand and with the other pulled out from her old suitcase a skull-faced, black-robed puppet. Before the third bell could finish its deep toll, she hummed her ceiling chant in order for their souls to transfer into the miniature black-caped puppet. Three towering beings swayed back and forth as she continued her chant and laid the puppet in the center of all three. They as one turned and cowled their heads in Lupin's direction, then back towards the puppet. Then the three walked towards a small puppet and seemed to vanish into the darkness. The wind died down and all was silent and still. Lupin gingerly walked towards the small puppet and slowly knelt down next to it. The puppet began to twitch, and with what almost sounded like a small gasp, then slowly sat up. Lupin smiled at the small figure as it looked up at her. The puppet looked down at the floor and trembled. All of a sudden, the little figure began to float. Lupin chuckled and gestured towards her now empty suitcase. The little puppet nodded and floated towards it. With a satisfied cackle, Lupin carefully closed the suitcase and began walking her way to her next destination. Later, Lupin wearily shuffled her way towards Donkey Lady Bridge. She had already walked several miles from the nearest bus stop and had stopped only to catch her breath when all of a sudden from behind a 
truck blaring music began to obnoxiously honk at Lupin as it sped past her. The bridge was not far and Lupin saw that the truck had come to a screeching halt on the middle of the bridge. The person killed both the lights and the engine in the middle of the bridge. A male driver in his early 20s rolled down his window as he impatiently honked his horn three times. Where is she? The driver asked, indicating towards the back seat to the other teens in the car. Just then, the sound of loud shrieks and growls echoed from the darkness and surrounded everyone. They could see swaying of bushes in the darkness and hear galloping sounds from all directions. As the sounds got closer and closer, Lupin knew that they were being hunted. The obnoxious driver laughed, thinking it was all a joke, and turned back on his headlights to reveal a ghastly sight. It was a perversion of both woman and donkey. The lower body was a dusky gray with four horse-like legs. The upper half clearly a woman, but with dark gray hair covering most of her grayish form. The atrocity stood before their headlights and with completely black eyes looked straight at the occupants of the truck's cabin. Her elongated face smiled wickedly at them, revealing sharp pointy teeth. Oh damn, the guy uttered. He looked over in Lupin's direction, who was now standing by their truck's door, staring at the donkey lady. Grandma, he shouted at her. Grandma, he shouted at her. Hurry up, get in the truck, he frantically yelled while reaching over and opening the door. One of the girls gasped and yanked it shut. What the hell are you doing? Start the car, she shrieked. We can't just leave her here with that thing. That's like murder or something, he shouted back at her. As the two argued, Lupin calmly shuffled towards the front of the truck and pulled out a centaur-like creature puppet from her suitcase. Don't worry, mijo, go home, she said as she placed a handmade puppet on the floor in front of the truck. They all watched in silence as Lupin stood before the angry creature as its hooves clawed in impatience at the tar-covered floor of the bridge. Lupin muttered a few incoherent words and gestured at the large she-beast as she snarled and began to impatiently pace side to side. It stared at the old woman through its dead black eyes. Suddenly, with a loud bray, it charged straight towards her, its heavy hooves angrily clanging on the floor. It lifted its hooves to trample the old woman, but just as the hooves were coming down on her frail form, the she-beast vanished. Everyone in the truck still had their mouths wide open in terror. All sat in total silence. Everyone in the car looked in awe as the puppet the old woman had been holding now stood on the hood of the truck on all fours. The little arms extended towards Lupin as if it wanting to be carried. Lupin chuckled as she picked her up gently. Don't be stubborn anymore, my little Borita, she said as she shifted the puppet in her suitcase gently and made her way back to the bus stop. Now Lupin had known that the cantina El Camaroncito had been the infamous bar where a woman had supposedly danced with the devil himself. But everyone else knew it now as the notorious Playa's Gentlemen's Club. She had snuck in during the early morning hours since unlike the other two legends, where the spirits were bound to a certain place, this was different. She placed the puppet she was holding down on the concrete basement floor before her. Lupin knew she would have to actually summon a spirit this time, although not the true devil himself, since she wasn't looking for hell on earth. 
She had remembered that years ago, after the bar had closed down, but before it had turned into a strip club, that there had been the death of a local Mexican leader of a gang. The demons had used the place as their local hangout. During the 50s, when the drug age was just beginning to bloom, he was one of the kinder old-timer gangsters and had earned the nickname Diablo, not just because he was devilishly handsome and smart, but because of his brutality to those who had crossed him. Although he was in the drug business, he was well known for keeping the streets clean from other gangs and unprovoked violence. No one had dared to cross him until one late fateful night after a meeting when he had been brutally gunned down by a rival gang at his favorite hangout. Lupin knew that he was perfect for what she had needed. She gestured in the air and muttered her final words to the spell and thunder and lightning crashed down from outside the window onto the tiny form sprawled on the floor before her. She held her breath and as she peered down at him, finally after several seconds his tiny chest began to rise and fall as life breathed into the small Mexican devil puppet. The little puppet struggled as he sat up and as his brilliant red face looked down at his hand-stitched suit and tie and then up at Lupin, she smiled as he struggled slightly to stand up on his hoof and chicken foot and raised his tiny arms up to her. His yellow painted eyes looked up at Lupin curiously as she gingerly picked him up. Come, little Diablito, we have much work to do. Well, and that is chapter one, guys. Um, I really appreciate you kind of carrying me out, story time with the Dark Queen and everything. Um, you know, I will continue to try to keep doing story time with the Dark Queen. Um, right now I've got a lot of stuff going on in the works. i um, hoping to bring you more stuff and let me know as far as comments, you know, feedback. I definitely do appreciate and, and love, um... Other than that, I think I'm going to be heading out. Well, this is Dark Queen signing out, and thank you for checking out my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it, and thanks.